Hey guys, welcome back to Dustin Elysian Tale. And here we go. We will continue into the Blackmore Mountains. I was about to say the Blackmore Mines, because that sounds like a location that would be in this game. But no. It reminds me of something else, and I can't remember what it is. It's like the... Blackmore Mines. That sounds like it's from another game, and I can't figure what. So we got some more, uh... Some more wolves, wolves to take care of. And in this area, oh, we have an asshole. Uh, also a lot of wall climbing. I don't actually remember, what is the item of this area? I feel like it's obvious. Like super obvious. Like, down here, kind of obvious. Yeah, there's a chest down here, I believe. Yeah, if I could just get over to it. There we go. I hate wind that you have to go against to get an objective. So, we got the mountain gear. And that's all that's up here. And it requires more fur. Like I said, I'll be doing a lot more collection off-screen. And maybe at the end of the uh, Let's Play... In the last video, I will post up a uh, little montage of what every uh, monster drops for... Uh, it, bleh, bleh, wow, I stuttered really badly there. On what every monster's item drops are. And I'm not talking like armors and stuff and material... Or uh, blacksmith blueprints, just the material components. Also, I'm glad I dropped on that because I've been... I would have been a little upset if I had to do that again. So, uh, we continue climbing the mountains. And we find quite a serene area now after that giant windstorm. Look, up ahead, a village. All the way up here? Do you think it's that moonblood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's en enough talking. Let's get up there. All right, let's see what it is. Halt! What? No. Impossible! Cassius! What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... You were dead! No. No, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer! Kill this... thing! It seems that we have met some of uh, General Gaius's guards. Now, the best way I found to take these guys out is use some fire. Because these guys can counter your attacks randomly if they're on the ground. Even in the air, I believe. But as you see, if I just try to swing at this guy, he'll counter my attacks randomly. Most of the time when he's on the floor. Or actually, no, just at any time, I guess. So, if you knock him into the air, which sometimes I don't want to, but anyway, it kills him. Why? Why destroy such a peaceful place? We didn't want any of this. Gus, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I'd remember it. I'd know it when I heard it. Seems we're getting pretty deep into Dust's mind. Maybe he's finally figuring out who he is. Maybe he is Cassius. We don't know. Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Aro, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. Are we really Cassius, or are we someone else? I don't... I don't know. This house... Do you remember something, Dust? 
This is impossible. We're slowly unlocking dust. How do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above dust. Dust is beginning to figure it out. Who he is. Let's watch. Ginger. She was sleeping right here. On the night I came to say goodbye. But I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her. Didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust. What are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're... But how? What's going on here? I... I remember now. But how? How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. Who are you? I am Elder Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They're Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that fated day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. You murderer! My parents did nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king. An act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village. Murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day. I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are djinn, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday, that he would come back. But could you really be him? Ginger, I don't know. I... I don't know. Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Who, or I guess, what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, 
We would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin. Just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen. And Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. You say that, but in all cases you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gotten through to him somehow. No, you're right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium, ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure our balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood Camp to the north in the Everdawn Basin. Isn't anywhere near the Everdon Volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? 
Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know. How about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or someplace that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. No, I'm fine. Come on, let's go to the Blowy Up Mountains. Really, I'm serious. Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you, really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard Guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following, and why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry. I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. <sighs> That scene, man. Man, I love this game. And the first time I actually got to that scene, it was just, man, I, I just kind of had to, the first time I played this game, I had to like take a 30 minute walk away from the game because that scene was just so, so deep. And most, like, text dumps in a game like that, I don't really like too much because obviously it's a lot of meticulous, uh, just meticulous reading or you're just like, yeah, 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 get on with the story. But that, I don't know why that particular twist or whatever, it just really hit me. And now... General Gaius? What news, Commander? I did not want to believe it, but Cassius is working with the Moonbloods. He has turned against us. That will be for me to decide. Our paths will cross at the Moonblood camp. Of that I am certain. I will speak with him personally. Is that... wise? Our victory is all but assured, Commander. We outnumber them ten to one. We possess superior technology. And we have the element of surprise. But why welcome this rogue element? He has already slain your own soldiers. What more proof do you need that he is a traitor to our cause? Cassius is hardly a rogue element, Commander. The Moonbloods have corrupted his mind, forced him to commit these acts against us. Once I can speak with him, once he remembers who he really is, I'm certain he will return to us. But... <clears throat> yes, sir. As you wish. Cassius, my own friend, so long as you draw breath, I will do what I can to save your broken mind. I promise. Oh, <sighs> so yeah, next time. Actually, let, let's go there now. And begin chapter five, The Legend. Welcome to the volcano. Place that is not to be trifled with lightly. The Moonblood Camp. Whoa. Halt! Who goes? Oh, it's you. Apologies, Miss Robin. Please, enter. 
so I think we'll make it through this part and leave the ending for next time. Let's go talk to our new friend. We welcome your presence, Sen Mithrarin. Preparations for war are nearly complete. Surely you have more soldiers than this. General Gaius is nothing if not thorough. His forces have exterminated most Moonbloods from this land. We are all that's left. How do you expect to win with so few soldiers? We cannot. That's why we created Sen Mithrarin. You dust will turn the tide. Ah, uh, well, no pressure or anything. Yeah. Does General Gaius know of this place? I fear he does now. What? How? One of our own has been keeping an eye on you since your travels began. A merchant, Sereth. Aha! I knew that creepy merchant was one of you guys. How did a Moonblood operate so freely in the Wildlands? He is a smart businessman. Deals in all the right places. Gaius's soldiers turn their gaze from him in exchange for free goods. However, no amount of bribery could cover up that Sereth was helping you to find us. And that's how Gaius found out. How much time do you think we have to prepare? Not long, I'm afraid. The whole purpose of Gaius's campaign is to wipe us from the face of this world. Once he knows of our final stronghold, he will send everything he has and destroy us. I see all sorts of lamps here, but no fire. Is this the way of the flameless light? It is, yes. In ancient times, the Moonbloods went by another name. We lived in a great society called the Sintak, and we wielded the knowledge to follow the way of the flameless light. Settle in dust. This could take a while. We sent a harness to power unlike any this world had ever seen. We built elaborate contraptions like these lamps, capable of piercing the darkness without so much as a spark. Well, obviously something went wrong, because we still have to build a fire every time Dust pulls out his map. Unfortunately, the ancient tomes do not say how the Sintuk fell, and that knowledge has been lost. Perhaps intentionally. All we know is that our kind were made as outcasts, and that has remained true for countless generations. For the longest time, we believe the Moonbloods were the only ones left who know of the way of the flameless light. But we were wrong. When General Gaius began his purge, there were stories of their weapons. Stories of elaborate contraptions that seemed to defy the natural world. Weapons that sound identical to those of the Sintuk in the most ancient of tales. What kinds of weapons are we talking about? Arrows made of light. Machines that take to the sky like birds. And we are supposed to fight these things with your... lamps. I did not say it would be easy. Nobody ever does. I did once, remember? Yeah, and you were wrong. Well, I'm here now. Is there anything I can do to help? We are spread rather thin. Our chief engineer, Sonjin, is having trouble with our camp's support systems. Go and speak with him when you can, and I'm sure he will explain further. There is also the matter of our scout, Kier. He is not checked in for many hours. But with our battle preparations, we have not been able to mobilize a proper search party. His patrol takes him east of our camp if you aim to find him. Alright, so, uh... Let's talk to Ginger real quick. And, uh... Maybe we can find the engineer. Ginger? Jin? Oh, Dust. It's you. Yeah, just me. Are you alright? I'll be fine. Just a lot to think about. Listen, about Jin. Yes? What was he like? He was very kind. Almost to a fault, really. I like him already. <laughs> yes, he had that effect on people. I like to believe it's what made you do all those wonderful things for Aurora and Mudpot. Aro was always testing me. Every time I made a choice, he would tell me if it was the right one. I was choosing whether to follow Jin or Cassius. I believe they were both trying to influence my actions. And you listen to Jin? Yeah, he's kinda hard to ignore. He is, isn't he? Or at least he was. 
No, Ginger. I think you were right the first time. I think Jin continues to live through my actions. He's guiding me, keeping me on the right path. But what of your other half? Cassius murdered my family, Dust. He destroyed my village, killed my friends. How can you control such a terrible being? I feel his presence every time I swing the blade of Ara. I believe the Elder was right. Without him, I'd have been cut down long ago. But Jin... Jin keeps him from taking control. As long as Cassius lives within you, though, there's always that danger. You could always be pulled to a path of evil. I won't lie. I felt him pulling me to take the quick and easy path. To leave the weak to fend for themselves. To show no mercy to those in my way. Perhaps someday you can be rid of his foul presence. Maybe. Someday. For now, I need him to defeat Gaius. There's no other way. I know. Still, I'm glad we were able to talk, Dust. Me too, Ginger. I'll be back before you know it. Be careful. Alright. Uh, let's see if we can make a little quick stop to uh, Senjin. Ah, you've arrived just in time, Mithrarin. My name is Sanjin. I'm what you'd call a chief engineer, I suppose the term is. The Elder mentioned you needed some help? Yes, indeed. In the caverns below, we've set up machinery to provide the camp with power and water. Unfortunately, seismic activity has shut down both systems, so we need to get them running once more. I have been rather preoccupied handling the battle preparations, so if you could, I would appreciate it if you went down there to examine the generators. Sure, Sanjin. I'll take a look. Thank you. You'll need to restart the generator and water pump when you're down there. We'll require both systems to be running if we're going to stand a chance against General Gaius. <sighs> Alright. We got a lot of stuff on our plate. Being, you know, said we're a Mithralaran, the leader of who will save this race from complete extermination and to save the world from a war that nobody really wants. But, we will have to save that all for next time. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the final battle against General Gaius. See you guys then.